Welcome back to another episode of the ACE Talks podcast, where we talk about Ecuador and a little more. Today, we're joined by special guest and friend, Mark Horning. How's it going, Mark? It's How are you doing? Doing great, Ace. Nice to, to uh, do this in person, and I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to have you here. Are you ready to tell us about your experience in Ecuador? Absolutely. Mark has been here about approximately how long? Two months. Two months. And what made you decide to come to Ecuador? I came because of a suggestion from a friend. He knows someone here, and so that's how I made that decision. But I'm also looking for a place to retire, and it hadn't been uh, where I initially had looked to, to live, possibly, but it has now become my first choice. And then th that's why I came. While we're on that topic, on that situation, what would be your second choice right now? Of a place to live? Yeah. Possibly Thailand or the Philippines. What do you think stands out about those places, about Ecuador and those places that makes you want to stay in these places? The cost of living, healthcare possibly, probably. I know definitely, I'm not so sure about Asia. I'm not sure how well that works there. I, I understand better now how it works in Ecuador and I'm comfortable with that. And that's a major concern, you know, as always. Cost and climate are two of my most important items that, that really, you know, I, I feel I need. It's really important to know these things because maybe there's other people who also want to come for the same reasons. So it's good to know what your experience is like. So maybe, you know, everyone can share a little bit of what, yes. you know, oh, we feel the same way. Let's see what, what happens here. Yes. Where exactly in Ecuador, like, or an approximate area, where are you staying? Like, where, where have you been hanging out? Well, I initially came in and I've been staying mostly near Montanita, right. uh, close to there. Nice little town there. And uh, I like it a lot, actually. So it's uh, similar, actually quite a bit larger than a place I had lived for a long time when I was back in the States. And I like it a lot. Around uh, Ecuador, what places have you been to other than Montanita? Well, I've been to Cuenca for a little bit of time in the areas surrounding. I did a nice tour with Luis that, that, that you know you and I know, and he was wonderful. So I spent time in Cuenca about a week. I went to Quito for one week, and then some unexpected things happened, and I returned to, to Quito for an, another week. And then I decided to come here and uh, spend some time in Monta and uh, meet with you and um, uh, the gracious gringo, uh, <laughs> Don Shader. Our good friend Don, who's here. You want to say hi, Don? Hi. Hi, Don. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There he is. Walking by. Powerful. <laughs> We're actually at Don's place yes, right we now. Are. We're recording this episode. Thank you, so, Don. Thank you, Don. Sure. Wait until you get my bill. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be waiting for it. All right. So continuing on with uh, the question. So you've had this experience with, uh, with a tour with, Lu with Lewis, and uh, yes. you also had an experience with us. I'd like to know what can you tell me or what can you tell everyone about uh, what you experienced? Like, what did you think of each tour? Like, I guess we'll start off with the one you had with, with me since you had a tour Absolutely. with me first. What did you think about it? I enjoyed it immensely. I got to spend two days, two and a half days actually with Ace here and he took me all over Puerto Viejo and we just a little bit of time in Monta, but around Monta. And we got to beaches and we got to see restaurants and uh, we got to archaeological sites, you know, and it is just, it was a lot of fun. I got to see Ecuador from a different perspective than an expat, than showing me around and in their life, in their world. So I got to see it from a native, which was invaluable. If you go, you know, my thought is if you're going to come to Ecuador, you know, maybe you should investigate who, you, you know, the people you're going to be with and the areas they live and their experience. And that's how I feel about it. And... I found it to be rewarding. Uh, you and Anna and um, Nacho, you know, escorted me and showed me all these wonderful things. We had wonderful fun. We ate good food. So it was a wonderful time. So I really enjoyed it. And uh, that was my thought, was to, to do not just the usual tour stuff. And that's why I really treasured um, our time together. It was not the usual tour stuff. And you were really so gracious and generous. And uh, you're just really a good human being. And that's what I enjoyed most about it, I think. I appreciate the kind comments. And you know, uh, you them. <laughs> <laughs> with, with Nacho and Annabelle, every time I see them, yes. uh, whenever I go visit them, they always ask for you. They're always, one, they're always yeah. hey, how's Mark doing? Is, is Mark still in Ecuador? I'm like, yeah, he might stay here forever, you know, so we might get to see him again. Yeah. Ah, that's really cool. So they do miss you, and they had a yeah. great time hanging out with you, too. Yeah, like, well, yeah so I did, too. So, and, and this is my first choice, and I will say, I am looking at other places, possibly, you know, you know, I thought about Colombia, maybe Guatemala, but, uh, you know, I really like the climate here. And then what really surprised me when I got here was the people. 
it was surprising, you know, the, the, the kindness and, and the helpfulness of the, of, of the people, especially when you get out of the major city areas like Cuenca or Manta or uh, Puerto Viejo, even Quito, you know, you get some of the smaller areas, you know, people can be a little, they look at you interesting because they know you're not from here, but everybody's been very kind and helpful whenever I've been, so. It's always great to have those great experiences, like the, the positive ones, because, you yes. know, Anywhere you go, you're always like prone to have a really good experience or you never know when something really bad could happen. Yes. But it's always better that all the good things happen. Like yes. I can give a thousand warnings and none of them can happen. And yes. to me, that's like the ideal situation, the Correct. ideal scenario. You just come and like everything goes perfect. And you're like, oh, I wonder if Ace is lying. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not, it, I mean, I, I can't, it's not lying. It's just, yeah. I can't really say that you're always going to go through this or that. I just know that there are things that people go through yes. here. So. I've always got to let people know about these things. Yes. It's better that than it happening. You're like, why did no one tell me? Right. But anyways, moving on with, yeah. uh, with this discussion about like okay. this conversation about yes. um, the tours. So you had one tour with me over yes. here in Puerto Viejo and Manta. Si. How was your tour with uh, Build Dev Tours with Mr. Lewis? How was it over there? Luis was great. It's kind of interesting. I actually stayed in the hotel I stayed in, which is this wonderful old hotel and wonderfully cold compared to the coast <laughs> hotel right around the corner. I was literally two blocks from his office. So he actually met me for lunch the first day before we went for the tour. Then we went for the tour and he did his usual tour because I asked for it. He actually did it for me specifically because uh, I was the only one. And we went to the root of the guitars and it was disappointing that we didn't see as many people or guitars because their business is being destroyed by the Chinese imports. Oh. They're so cheap that they can't, they can't sustain their business. But the guitars I saw were wonderful, you know. Um, and then we went to saw, see the orchids, and so we went all around an area outside of Cuenca called San, uh, San Bartolome and uh, Cordele. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And so I got to see a different part of the Andes. And so we did that, and then we took a day, and then I went, took a day through, through Cuenca itself, and I just went around. And Cuenca, there was, it was the middle of a celebration. You know, they had a week of Corpus Christi. And so there were fireworks every night. The, the main uh, square, Parque de Calderon, was uh, packed with people and vendors. It was a lot of fun. I did the double-decker bus and got to see all of Cuenca. It was, Cuenca's a wonderful little town. And another tour I did, I, is one that he's been investigating to go on. And, and it was a tour up into a hiking area. Uh, I think it's called the, uh, what was it? It's uh, Kubilan, Bosque de Kubilan. It, there, it's, a, it's an area, it's a mountain, an area that you can go climb in. It's a park, a national park. And so uh, I went with uh, his assistant, uh, Jessica. Okay. And so we went on this tour with a bunch of other people and we got to climb around in the, in, in the jungles and, or the mountains and stuff and come back. And it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. So. That's great. Yeah. I, I'm glad you had a good time because I was, uh, I've yes. always wanted to like know what the situation is over in Cuenca. Yes. And you know, I, after I got good comments from someone else who supports yes. the channel about, you know, Lewis, I was like, I can recommend Lewis to you because yes. he seems to be really cool, really great. And oh, uh, I've gotten in touch with him. We still have to meet up. But um, that'll be at a later date. You know, you two are, how did I put it to you in, in a text? I don't remember if I was in a text, but like peas in a pod, you could say like, yeah, I guess you could you say. Yeah, you guys are, 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 are twin brothers from different mothers, <laughs> is, is how I look at you two, after knowing and meeting both of you. He, was, he graciously actually had, had a meal with me before I left too, you know, so I got to see him during work and outside of work, so, which was nice, it was really nice. When you think about the way, the reason why people come here, everyone has their own personal reasons, of course. There's things that everyone likes and they would like to see. There's yes. things that everyone you know, doesn't like, things that they don't want to see. So, of course, there's things that in the personal sense you're going to like right. and things that you're not going to like that maybe someone else will like, right. the things you don't like, and maybe they won't like the things that you okay. do like. Yeah. So this just to transition into the fact that uh, we're, to talk about the things that you don't like or maybe you didn't like while you were here in... Um, in Ecuador, like the yes. places that you got to visit, of course. I remember you had told me that you were in Quito si. and the cold was something that, you know, you, it was like, it was cold. I don't know if you didn't like it, but like in comparison to the, to the warmth of the coast, like you preferred the warmth of the coast. But was there anything in Ecuador that stood out that maybe, you know, wasn't like the best for you? Maybe you didn't, it's not that you didn't like it, it just wasn't the best. You know, that's a difficult question to answer. It's, um, 
it's one of it's about what you're used to and, and, and what your expectations are. I think color that a lot. I've been painted different pictures by different people who've been here and have different viewpoints of it. To me, so some of it was, was different, you know. I see where you can have this little store that looks like it's barely open. It's the size of a, uh, literally it's the size of a closet next to a modern building that that's, has all the technology in the world. It's that disparity between have and have not was a little different to get used to. The upkeep of the cities is somewhat different. Some areas they care a lot, some areas they care not one bit. The discrepancy is a lot different than I'm used to in the life I've had in the past. Do I like it? Is it better? I don't have that judgment on it. Uh, I, it is what it is. Could things be better in certain ways? Absolutely. Could things be worse? Absolutely. From my point of view, there's nothing that I would say that I didn't, that I really disliked, you know? I mean, you gotta get used to, you gotta be, you gotta expect that things aren't gonna be exactly what you possibly thought they were and what they're necessarily always portrayed as. You know, like driving here is not as bad as I thought the drivers were gonna be as, as pictures have been portrayed. Okay, like we talked about, there, there, there's a coordination that the people who drive here have together <laughs> and they do it well, okay? <laughs> it may not be what you're used to from where you're from in the United States, especially. So think of that. <laughs> but it's not, not as bad as people make it out to be. And I think that's the same as with the stores and the areas you go into. I feel the same exact way. It's going to be a little different than what you expected, maybe worse, maybe better. But, you know, what I like is that there is availability everywhere I've been, even in the little areas, like the, the, the stores and availability. Now, your availability at certain hours and time of day, you're not going to have the convenience of a 24 hours. Maybe not, you're not going to find coffee at six in the morning here. It ain't happening, okay, unless you make your own, <laughs> okay? And so things like that, right? And being able to run to, you know, the 24 hour or open till 12 midnight store for groceries is not probably not going to happen most places unless you live in Quito or someplace. But other than that, those are the kind of things that I find that are different. But is, is it bad or good? No. But I like the fact that I can walk around a store, almost any corner on any street, and there's a store I can go buy something to drink, something to snack on, fruits. They're everywhere here. They're quite amazing. That, that's different. And I like it actually. Different isn't always bad. No, it's not. So based on all the time, well, I know it hasn't been long, long, but it's right. been, you know, you can form kind of a, a mini opinion, even if, you know, yes. you say, you know, maybe can't like this, you can't like that. But in the time that you've been here, like, what have you noticed maybe that's different from what you've seen maybe on YouTube, like, or in blogs, like maybe things that haven't been mentioned that yeah. you feel like it would be good for everyone to know about. And also, what are some recommendations that you can give to maybe someone coming over here? From my perspective, it's different than I expected. To me, it seems like people tend to focus or portray more the bad things that happen here, but in comparison to the United States, is it really more? I mean, there's a whole difference in, in like the violence and crime and stuff. I didn't see, I haven't been, I, but, I, but I also have an awareness where I'm not gonna put myself in a situation to be in those situations, but I felt completely safe the whole time I've been here, whether it be Montanita, well, Montanita is kind of rough, <laughs> but that area, you know, I feel completely safe at night in the town I'm in, right? I mean, it's a little town and I feel completely safe at six, eight, nine o'clock at night walking around, okay? Cuenca is safe. I felt perfectly safe there. Uh, the areas of Quito I was in, I didn't go out late at night, but I walked around a lot during the day and I felt completely safe, though I, could, I did see some of the sketchier parts of the town, but you know, I mean, it looks just like a big city to me. I will say this. My thought is to move here permanently. And I love the climate on the coast. You know, even in the mountains, the cold there is not the cold in Colorado. Let me try to put it that way. Actually, the more I'm here, the more I like it, the more I'm used to it. And, you know, there's so much I do like about it, you know. Actually, like I said, more so than when I first came here. You start falling in love with Ecuador. I am falling in love with Ecuador, <laughs> and I love, I love the people. Food is, is kind of an interesting thing, but man, they got some really good food here. If you know where to go get it, it's really good. You can eat American food, even on the coast, down where I'm at, you can get stuff like that. Or you can eat the native stuff. The food is fresh here. That's one thing I noticed. Food is a lot fresher than some areas, like on the coast, you got to worry about refrigeration. They don't do it quite as well like in Quito or Monto. <laughs> 
<laughs> real quick, all right? So there's things you got to watch for, but, you know, by and large, the food is fresh here, and, and I like that. It's like Don said, you know, you're going to, you know, you're going to be forced to eat healthier. And so I like that too, which is nice. All right. Yeah, fruits and vegetables are everywhere. There's a fun, there's a fun question here because uh, speaking yeah. of food, when you had the tour with us, and yes. since you were in Cuenca, and since you went to Quito, yes. since you've been in a nice variety yes. of places, even though Cuenca is considered to be, uh, some people consider it big town, like a big city, but it's actually just a small town, maybe bigger than smaller towns than that one. Yeah. But anyways, the food style, the food choices that you had over here, we had you experience the wonderful Tonga. Si, si. You got yeah. to eat viche. Oh, I love each other. Encebollado. Encebollado. Arroz yeah. marinero, sí. which was the one you also had yes. over in, uh, it was San Clemente. Sí. And I don't know, what foods did you have in Quito and what foods did you have in Cuenca that were maybe specific to those areas? Um, I ate at, uh, which they have here, the para, they have La there, yeah, mm -hmm. I had bizcocho. Bizcocho. They, they, that's some a big thing that's going on up in, Quito, outside of Quito, they have a town that has, you know, they have a whole street of people selling those things. Quick was a little different. The food there, I didn't really have a lot of native stuff so much because I was in the in Cuenca itself, um, and, I, and I ate a lot of actually American food there, of all things, you know, because you have the Sunrise Cafe, was right around the corner from me. The hotel I was at has an American restaurant in it. And so it was a different type. I wasn't so much native food there. And then on the coast, I have, you know, the enceboyadas and, you know, all, you know, paracones with everything and, and ceviche. What I noticed is that shrimp, camarones, are really popular on the coast because there's a lot of access to it. And they have other seafood like the cangrejos. It was real popular in Quito, which is in the middle of the mountains, so I'm kind of not sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I noticed there's a lot of that there. So, and those are the kind of things I noticed about the food. I will say that th there's an amazing diversity in the different places I've been. In fact, what I found out through like the tours and stuff is that there are 14 different indigenous groups here in, in Ecuador, let alone everyone else. And every place you go, you're going to see a different culture slightly. You're going to see a different food slightly. And uh, I've only been to a few places, so I can't imagine what it's like when I come back to visit the rest. Oof. <laughs> it's going to be quite the experience. <laughs> yes. So, like I said with the food, now, okay. the, the, the hard-hitting question, which one was the best which out of all those dishes, best? but from here? Wow, God, it's hard to say. You know, the ones I like the best, the one I really like the best so far has been the viche. The viche. Si, si best. I love that VJ, especially with the rice, the arroz, and what was the... You mean the hard rice that yeah, came the, with it? Yeah, what's the hard rice name? They call that cocolon here. Cocolon, see, the cocolon and the arroz with the VJ. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Dang, you're on Ace's podcast. <laughs> you had to say encebollado. No, I'm kidding. Okay, that's right near, near the top, though, because that was really good, because the place you took me to was amazing. It's actually the best one I've had since I've been in. I'm telling you, there's yeah, specific yeah, places, yeah. and that's the thing, the part of the diversity of the food. Yes. You can find it in various places. Right, right, yeah. But never underestimate the fact that if you ate it once, it might have been bad, right. but maybe it was because of the place you were eating it at. Yes. You correct. have to go to a different place and try it to see if it's better over there. Correct. Specifically, food from the coast is typically not made well in the, in the highlands. That's right. why people in the coast, you'll always see images where they say, no, the, the food from the highlands is bad, terrible. The food from the coast, never eaten in cebollado, in, yeah. in Quito, because yeah. it's going to be the worst. And vice versa, people from Quito, yeah. they make it better. Their, their right. food there, like hornados or, or cuy. And, um, yeah, I've seen Kui, but not, I've seen it actually both cooked and live. <laughs> <laughs> Little guy running across the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of e interesting to see one being grilled on the street. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which, you know, you, yeah, it, that's a different thing than, yeah. I like <laughs> the food, though, the, the diversity of food. What I will say, one thing I do, do notice is that the bolognes in the mountains are not as good as the bologna, bolognese. Here on in the, the coast. coast. Oh, yeah, not even close. <laughs> I'm telling you, there, that's why there's always that conversation that highland food is in the highlands yes. and coastal food is in the coast. But it's good. The food is good everywhere you go. Oh, yeah. You know, if you go to the right places, the if food is right good places. everywhere you go. Here. So just uh, to, uh, as a finishing, you know, thought. Oh, one of the things I wanted to bring up as final thoughts is to be prepared for. 
I guess this may be go under one of the other categories of what I like and didn't like. This is not something I didn't like or didn't, I don't like so much. But my final thought is something we've mentioned is money management. Money management is important here because you're going to be, especially coming from places that use cards mostly, you're going to be using cash here. Okay, you're going to be using cash and you're going to be using change, coins. And be prepared for that because, you know, you're not, I'm not going to get into, especially where I'm staying, you know, I'm not going to give a cab driver a $20 bill for a $1, you know, fare. Because he's going to look at me like I'm crazy and that's going to be it, right? You know, it's like, I'm going to take your $20 and I'm not going to give you any change because I don't have enough. I'll give you what I have and that's it, right? So, so be prepared to, in fact, I think you and Don should maybe do one together or do separately a money management. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! That's the one of the things I will definitely say is be prepared for something you're, because the United States I, I take a card out and for a fifty cent purchase I'm using a credit card, and everywhere I go unless I'm at a fair, and prepared to use money I'm not going to use money. On the other hand, over here it's all the time. It, it's all it is, right? Well, I mean, no, we go to the cities and I can use tarjetas at certain restaurants and places. Like I go to these wonderful malls. The malls here are. are fantastic right I mean like they used to be in the United States all over the United States still has nice ones but not as not like we used to have and not as many as anyway and so all those are just like the United States and just as good in quality and everything's the same there's no difference they have the same kind of stores they have the same kind of service they have the same kind of quality or lack of quality <laughs> you look at it it can be hit or miss yeah exactly from time to time but all that's, right that's the one thing all right then so Mark I appreciate you being here on the show Absolutely. today. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I hope you're enjoying and you keep enjoying the time you have left in yes. Ecuador. And hopefully this does end up being your final retirement spot, the place that you decide to live in yeah. forever. So that way we can keep hanging out. There and, you go. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's hope that happens. I'd like to thank obviously everyone for joining us in today's show. We will have more to talk about at later dates with Mark, maybe without Mark. It all depends. So stay tuned. Make sure you take care of yourselves and as always, ace out.